right. We are getting started. I think it's almost there. All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome to MS Office Hours. Today is Thursday, August 18th. I am one of your hosts, Heather Cox, with my miniature version here. This is Dakota. Can you wave very quickly? OK. We also have other co-hosts with us. Hey, everybody. Stephanie Stevens here with Cheeto. Hi, Victoria Dean, just by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett Chandler. Sarah needs to bring some friends next week. We'd love yeah. to see you. Show and tell friend. pets. They're sleeping right now. There's peace in the oh, world. Then do so. not wait. Right. Yeah, yeah okay. don't never, that. never. <laughs> I'm Andrea Singrio. I don't have any friends with me today either, but it's a pleasure to be with you all. All right. And we have our wonderful. Uh, speaker today coming. Oh, I, I, Andre, I'm loving the setup here. And so we are very excited about this topic. Obviously, folks are excited about this topic as they were prepping us with questions before the call. And that's not typical. So we're going to turn it over to you. We'll turn off our cameras and mics and the floor is entirely yours. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And thank you for having me. I'm going to let this load. Hopefully you see Microsoft Teams collaborative calling. If I can get a thumbs up. You're all set. All right, thank you. And my name is Andre Mitchell. I am a Teams technical specialist. I'm based out of San Diego, uh, America's finest city, I'm told. But I support the whole US when it comes to Teams and Teams calling from a education and higher ed, K through 12 and medical center standpoint. In my travels and in my meetings with customers, what comes up a lot whenever we talk about Teams calling is what can Teams do at the contact center level? So I want to go through some scenarios that we've developed and what you get just out of the box with your investment in Teams. First, some dis a full disclosure is not a contact center per se. We brand it as collaborative calling. Um, because of uh, what we are giving you out of the box for free. So it's more streamlined, it's internal, external. It's kind of that weight room uh, experience from a call queue standpoint. But if you pair your auto attendance and your call queues and voice enable channels, which I'm gonna show later, you can get a lot of the feature set that you would expect from a contact center. I also wanna just highlight the fact that we do have a full contact center solution and we can partner with vendors for a, a contact center solution. So if you have one right now in place, there is a, a good chance we can still integrate that into our solution. But we also have our own contact center solution, which combines our investment in nuanced speech recognition technology. It combines the Teams platform. It combines the Dynamics 365, and it combines the Power Platform, and it gives you a rich experience. So if you need more than what we give you out of the box with Teams, we do have options. I want to make sure I say that at the front end. So what is our collaborative calling capabilities? So for us, it's a pairing of our auto attendant, our call queue, and our voice enabled channel. Our auto attendant is that menu system, you know, press one here, press two for this, press three, gives you the ability to route to directories, uh, gives you, can format any kind of scenario with um, office hours, holiday scheduling, all of those options that you would expect for that front end um, experience when people call your main number. Call queues is that group of agents that you can then take calls and, and route calls back and forth and have coverage. You know, I've seen people use this in an attended console scenario where that main receptionist that may take calls and you might need coverage. You know, pairing an auto attendant and a call queue together works well in that scenario. And voice enable channels it takes the call queue up another level. So you can put your resources in a channel and actually assign that to the call queue. And this gives you more of that look and feel of what a traditional contact center view might look like. Going deeper into each option, the auto attendant will support, you know, your toll free number, your service numbers, your dial by name or your directory number search abilities. You can set up greetings or you can use our text to speech engine and actually type out your greetings. I know a lot of times when you're trying to get that voice of the company recorded, 
that can be a, a recording session in itself and could take a lot of time, a lot of takes. But we give you that flexibility to just type in what you want your attendant to say and even change languages if you need. The call queues also support a custom greeting and that ability to put users on hold that are calling into your scenario and wait and wait until they're answered by an agent that's able to accept their call. And the agents themselves can redirect those calls. And if they're making calls outbound, they can even change what their caller ID was so, so they don't have to show their own caller ID. They can show your main number or any other number you would like to show that you own in your tenant. And if people are waiting and there's some overflow and they've waited too long, you can give people the ability to send those calls to a shared voicemail inbox. Voice enabled channels, like I said, takes that to another step. So here, if you look on the right side, you have that agent view. So you can see people who are online and able to take calls. This is great if you have that supervisor role that needs to go in and manage and make sure people are actually taking calls. Also, you have a shared call history and the ability to see what voicemails are waiting to be checked for that call queue. And then you can even give that owner an option to even do more with that voicemail. They need to forward that message somewhere else or deal with anything that's sensitive or time sensitive that needs to be looked at. And we have reports. This is something that I think a lot of people don't know about is the ability to actually have reports included with your system. So leveraging our Power BI templates, we have three reports and we have documentations that show you how to actually import these into your Power BI and your call queue dashboard. So you can see your auto attendant, you can see analytics for calls coming in, incoming calls, the directory search methods, caller actions, and the result of that call. Going even more, you can look at call queue stats. So you can see incoming call, call volume, call a result, timeout, overflow. You might want to know how often calls are abandoned in your tenant versus handled, and then average call length. And we have the average timeline, the agent timeline showing the calls coming in and what happened during that experience of the call. So these are all elements that come with our system. They don't, they're not turned on you know, by default, but you can go in through our docs and download the templates and see how to actually import these. And if you don't have Power BI, there's even documentation on how to get a free version of Power BI to actually play around and get these prerequisites set up. Getting started, simple and easy. If you already have calling, you know, you can start configuring and I'll take you through some of my demo tenant and how I set up mine. But if you don't, we also have options to get you up and running on a call trial um, and then setting up anything from an auto attendant to a call queue. And our documents even talk about some best practices, you know, some things like diagramming your call flow is very important. What to do if then, if it's during hours, if it's after hours, what do you want that call to do? So if you don't already have that documentation, we actually show you examples of what we would recommend you doing. Anything from a business requirement, anything from a technical requirement, we also show in our documentation. And there's always fast track guidance and support using our partner community. We can help you get you up and running. Now I talked about diagrams. So I want to talk on what my demo environment is set up so you can kind of get a feel for what I'm going to show you. In my call flow diagram, I have two auto attendants, one call queue and one voice enabled channel. The reason I have two auto attendants is our auto attendants have the ability to have a voice enabled action. So that means I can speak what option I want. Now, if you put that in front of your main number, when calls come in and people start talking, it's very sensitive and it will start disrupting the experience. So what I do is I have my main attendant play that greeting. And if you want to speak to someone in the directory and you hit my option to go to the directory, which in mine is option two, now I take you to a voice enabled auto attendant and that auto attendant now gives you the ability to speak your answers of who you want to speak to. The zero for my operator goes to one of my users and my tenant, Deborah Berger. I also have uh, open hours, open days, no holiday schedule yet, but I do have the ability to send calls to an after hours message or send calls to a main number 
in the right is kind of what the greeting that will play that I can edit quickly if I need to, depending on who I'm demoing for. And then my call routing option, zero for the operator, one will take you to the call queue. This is my main number for dialing. It is a live number, so you can actually be called right now, for example. I also have a number that goes directly to the call queue. The reason that is, is you might have a use case where you want to send calls directly into a call queue and you don't want them to have to go through all your menu options. I do caution you on this scenario because the call queue does not have open hours. So if you have a call queue and you give a number directly to it, I would recommend you put an auto attendant that does nothing but send it to the call queue just so you can check and make sure you're open, unless you're going to staff someone 24 hours a day. Call queue will check to see if agents are available. If so, it will send the call to the agent. If not, it will put the call on hold, and I have a timeout of two minutes. Um, I would recommend much more in a production environment, but for, for a time standpoint, I just have a two-minute timer, and then it sends my call to voicemail. All right, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing the presentation and move to my environment. So give me a moment as I shift sharing. All right. All right. So now we are in my Teams Admin Center. Down here at the bottom is my auto attendance, my call queues, and my holidays. I'm just going to take you through my setup so you can see what options I've selected. Under my auto attendance, like I mentioned, we have a main number, auto tenant, and a directory number. My main number is the one that is has the voice input set to off. My operator is Deborah Berger. And then my call flow is actually going to play my message and then use the menu options of my study group for one, directory press two, operator press zero. We even have in our docs guidance on how to word this, you know, because before I had it say press one for study group, but our doc said, you know what, it makes more sense to say what the option is and then give them the option. And I don't have the directory here because I'm sending them to the directory when they hit option one. So if I go to my directory intended, now you see I have the voice inputs on. And again, that's because the engine is very powerful, very sensitive, and I don't want to disrupt the scenario. What I noticed when I would demo, people would call and they'd start talking. And as they start talking, then they disrupt and they wouldn't even hear the meeting and they lose their focus on what they're actually going to show. So that's the auto attendance. And now let me show you the call queues. So I have one call queue. It's a study group. And I mentioned it's a voice enabled channel. To get to there, I simply went here, created a team. And in my channels, I have a channel called emergency help. And now in my call queue, in my study group, that's actually where I'm sending my calls to. So I'm simply sending calls to a channel. You have the ability to send it to groups or users or a channel. And here's my caller ID section. So now my agents can make outbound calls and they can mask their own number and showcase the main number or the study group number. And I want to touch on this before I do a, a quick demo is the options for actually making that call. You have four different algorithms we can apply to a routing method. We have the attendant routing that's going to blast out the call and whoever answers first gets the call. We have the serial routing that's going to route the call agent by agent. We have round robin that's going to equally. The serial is going to start with the first agent in your list and then route one by one. Then we have round robin, which is going to spread the wealth. Everyone's going to get the same amount of calls. And we have longest idle. Longest idle is going to say who has been ready and available, but has not received a call in the longest time. And then it's going to send the call to that person. I have present space, so it knows that if the agent has do not disturb on, we're not going to send the call to them. And also I'm giving agents the ability to opt in and opt out of even taking those calls. For my overflow and timeout, I'm simply sending them to a shared message and send them to my voicemail. All right, so here is the view of my agent. All right, so 
you see a call came in, it's left a voicemail. This is just a traditional Teams calling scenario, except here I'm forwarding calls to a, a, another phone. So I'm ringing and I'm also forwarding calls to a, a common area phone that I have in my office here. So I just want to showcase that the, the voicemail and the forwarding for this agent is always set on for this specific agent. I can come here and I can actually opt in and opt out by simply going into my settings and slipping that, slipping that toggle off or on. The voice enable channel, if I click that, I have all these options up here. I have the standard ability of a Teams channel where I can go in and chat and send messages. But if I click the calls button, now I'm looking at the view of the queue itself. So now you'll notice I have more voicemails that have come in. If you look at the call log, you're seeing it's actually marking the calls incoming for study group main number. Or if a call came in from the study group call queue, that shows that as well. But you can see that calls that are left voicemail didn't, they weren't my personal voicemail, even though it kind of looks like it because my name is there because I called from my cell phone. But these are calls specifically that came into the queue. So I'm able to differentiate between both and I still have the ability to see the transcription of that voicemail. And, and while I can't delete it, the owner that's the supervisor of this group in Outlook would be able to go in and delete those messages and call for it and do any other manipulation they want to do. If I collapse this dial pad, you can see the other agents that are in my queue. So this is a great view if you want to know if anyone's available to take those calls. If you have to go leave or if you're a supervisor and you want to put yourself in this, this group, you can actually see if your agents are available and I can see when they make a call. So now I'm going to actually make a phone call and call into the queue. I'm not going to answer it because you're going to hear a lot of background reverberation because of the audio devices, but I will put the call on speaker and let you see the call pop. Welcome to the National Office Hours. Please listen carefully as our menu options have changed. For the study group, press 1. For our directory, press 2. So to speak one. to our operator, press 0. You have reached the emergency study group. Hang on for the next available tutor. So I'm going to end that call. So the user came in. If you saw the status, it changed from from available to in a call. Now I'm going to. I don't know, Victoria. I see you're online. I don't. I don't know if you're able to take calls because if so, I can take myself off and try this again. Yes, I can take calls. I'm doing it from the web browser though, so I won't have all of the uh, all right call queue things. All right. So I'm going to toggle myself offline and make that call again so you can see the experience when Victoria answers. Welcome to the National Office Hours. Please listen carefully as our menu options have changed. You have reached the emergency study group. Hang on for the next available tutor. See, I can see she's in the call. So again, this is a great view. And for a lot of my customers, this is what they're looking for from a contact center-ish experience, the ability to see their agents and see when they're on a call. Now we are iterating on this feature as well. We recently announced that our common area phones can be also brought in and be participate in call queues. Before they couldn't, but we've actually added the advanced capability of letting the common area phone be a part of the call queue. And that's actually something that appears to be simple to set up. I haven't set it up yet, but I do want to at least show you the option in my uh, demo tenant. 
So under configuration profiles, under common area phone, you now have this option here to check the box for advanced calling. So this lets it become a common area phone that can be leveraged and call queues and even have voicemail. Now we're also planning to bring out the ability to do whisper and barge. So if you're not familiar with those, those are contact center lingo for the ability of a supervisor to barge in on a call discreetly and actually hear the call that's going on. And also if they need to take that call, they can barge in and actually take that call. And I say all that to say that we have a lot of options for you with the solution. And if you want to even take it to a next level, we can actually have that contact center conversation. So I'm going to stop sharing and open it up for any questions. I know I think Nate was doing some fancy work in the chat and answered quite a few of the questions. So and, and Nate, you can join so any calls that I'm on just because you know it definitely makes the call go smoother. I appreciate that. Um, I see the question about Whisper and Barge. More to come on that. I do not have that answer yet, but I do know our product team has told us it's coming. Next question, can you record incoming and outgoing calls? Yes, so we have a couple options on recording. We actually have compli compliance recording partners if you had a full-size, full-scale contact center. But our team's voice solution itself gives you the ability to do calling, gives you the ability to do captioning, gives you the ability to do transcriptions. And the calls use video. I feel like that's a it depends kind of question. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a, if a call's coming in from teams calling, and it's coming into a main number, and it's coming into a call queue. It's a PSDN call, so there's no video there. Um, I'm trying to think of a scenario where there would be video, maybe if it was if a teams to teams call, but. Yeah, if it's a teams to teams call, then it you would have video capability as well. And you'll see the icons right. at the top that will kind of let you know uh, which one you can or cannot do. But I think if you end up doing a 10 digit dialing scenario, uh, you likely won't have that unless it picks up that it's another team's client. In a call queue scenario, unfortunately, no video. So if you route through a call queue for any reason, there wouldn't be any video associated with that. But that's where Dynamics Omnichannel comes in, right? Yes, and if you're not familiar with the term Omnichannel, I learned about it myself. Omnichannel is Think of the contact center experience. Their challenge is having to staff up with full-time employees. Omnichannel gives your agents the ability to handle more calls from different areas. You can have a chat call going, you can have a call going, you can have a video call going. So you have less full-time employees in your contact center, but you're able to do more and actually take the journey of the call and keep that journey. So if someone hangs up and calls back in, you have that history following them, and actually you can direct them right back to the same agent. And I think there is a question about whether or not a supervisor can change uh, the hours of operation for their attendant only. Nate said stay uh, tuned, but yeah, basically changing hours of operation right now is an admin center control. So if your supervisor is not an admin, uh, then that can't be changed right now. And I would even add to that, you know, what comes across in a contact center scenario is how do I put people in and out of a of a queue so they can take calls as I need them for any type of overflow. And the beauty of this, if you have someone with an admin level role, they could come in and quickly add people to a channel or add them to make them agents. Is the call coming from inside the house? Um, it's going to be one of those videos that I'm constantly sharing out with customers. Yes. There's yes, a question. Oh, oh, sorry. 
I, all I was going to say is just, yes, I, we will share the video out, but just so that YouTube doesn't decide to be mean to us, I post it and then they get mad because there's like two seconds of a song. Um, I'm going to just cut that part out. So I'll just mute it. I'm sorry about that. Totally oh, about no that. worry. <laughs> on, no worry. It'll just test my skills here. Okay. Um, and so just, Wait, just does stream uh, have editing tools now. You know what, Andy? I just said test my skills, okay? <laughs> we'll see what I can do with the tools at my and disposal. Yes, Andrew, uh, Derek, <laughs> yes, you can have an agent and be in multiple queues. Uh, there was a question about connecting these calls to a ticketing systems API. Um, yeah, so, uh, so we, when you get to that level, um, we're starting to stretch the boundaries of what Teams gives you out of the box. But that would be a scenario where we would want to bring in uh, either another partner integration or the Dynamics, what I call the digital contact center platform that we just announced. I think that is it, it looks like for now. Uh, but again, you'll have this video. If you have questions for us, reach out to your account team and it'll trickle its way down um, to the people that have the answers. So thank you all. I hope this was helpful. Uh, hopefully you now know that Teams Voice is more than just making and receiving calls, and we're constantly adding more and more features um, to it very, very regularly. So uh, thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you again next week with Whiteboard. We know you want it. It's coming. We'll see you then. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Andre. This is great, you. Andre. Appreciate it.